praise God. Amen. We welcome you in our service today. Ungana nasi, tunapo imba huu imbo. Mungu watazidi kukubariki. Amen.
your families, oh Father. Open your fingers, open your fingers. Let it rain, let it rain. Jesus name we have worshipped amen and amen amen hallelujah can we celebrate our man of God amen I said amen, amen. yeah I had an option of going to Kericho I decided to come here <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I decided to come here so I can fellowship with us today. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you glad you are in the house of God? Yes. Wave your hands and say thank you Jesus. Just ask the Lord right now to speak to you. Say Lord minister to my spirit. Ask the Lord to speak to your heart. Everywhere, ask the Lord to minister to your heart. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Quickly, I want us to look at a verse of scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. I want to celebrate the praise and worship and the choir. The Lord bless you. Let's celebrate the praise and worship. Let's celebrate the choir. Awesome, powerful ministrations. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. All right, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10. And the God of all grace who had called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, fame and settle you. Somebody say amen. amen. And the God of all grace. I'm sharing on the God of all grace is my God. Amen. amen. The God of all grace is my God. And that's what I'll be sharing all through the services. The God of all grace is my God. So the God we serve is the God of all grace. It means God has all grace. It also means that whatever grace you are looking for is in God. Whatever grace you are looking for is in God. One of the ways God blesses us is by releasing grace on our lives. Amen. In Psalms 84 verse 11. Psalm 84 and verse 11. Let's look at that. Psalm 84 and verse number 11. The Bible says, For the Lord God, the, I prefer the KJV, the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and then no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So the God we serve is the owner and the giver of grace. So God is the owner and the giver of grace. And the grace of God can be found in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 8. Talking about Noah, the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. When Noah found grace, the grace he found made the difference in his life, in his generation. Because of the grace Noah found, Everybody died minus Noah and his family. Grace is a preserver. Glory to God. My prayer for you today is that as you leave this service this morning, you will find grace. Somebody shout a better amen here. You will find grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Now, grace is in levels and in dimensions. Because of time, I will pick two in this service, two in the next service, and uh, make progress in the other service. So I'll be looking at uh, dimensions or levels of grace. Number one level of grace or dimension of grace I'm looking at this morning is grace to stand. Somebody say grace to stand. In Romans chapter 5 and verse number 2. Romans 5 and verse number 2. Look at that. Romans 5 and verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Glory to God. So the grace of God gives us capacity to stand. Capacity to stand is released by grace. One time a teaching came around the body of Christ that we are in the era of grace, that God has forgiven us, God has uh, 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 sin cannot take a man to hell, that the sin you have committed is forgiven, the one you are committing is forgiven, the one you will commit has been forgiven, just live your life anyhow. It was a gospel that spread at one point. People began to cast off restraint. People began to live anyhow because they said we are in the era of grace. But the Bible said in Romans 6 verse 1, it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So the grace of God is not a license for weakness. It's not a license for sin. The scripture we read it says that it is by grace we stand. Somebody say amen here. Somebody seated here, the grace to stand is coming on your life. Can you shout a better amen here? Amen. Lift your one, say, I receive grace to stand. Louder again, say, I receive grace to stand. Now, what that means is you cannot stand by your, by your power. You can't stand by your wisdom. You can't stand by your ability. You need grace to stand. In 1 Samuel chapter number 2, I think verse number 9, 8, 9, he said, for by strength shall no man prevail. In, in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, he said, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Tell him, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by my spirit. In Zechariah chapter number 12 and verse number 10, he said, I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. So there is something called the spirit of grace. When it comes on a man, it empowers you to stand. Lift up your hand. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to stand. Kai, I want to hear you louder this morning. NCC, lift your hand. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to stand. And that is a word for somebody this morning. That in the name of Jesus, you will not fall by the wayside. God will give you grace, capacity to stand. Hallelujah. What does it mean to stand? Number one, to stand means to survive what others cannot survive. To survive what others cannot survive. That's what it means to stand. What makes you to survive what others cannot survive is not because you are smart. It's because you have received grace. Am I communicating here? Apostle Paul speaking one time, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. So when you see somebody falling, somebody sweating out, and somebody, you know, crumbling, and then you see yourself standing, don't think you are smarter. Thank God for the grace you have received. Somebody say, I thank God for the grace of God. Louder say in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your grace. Louder again say in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your grace. So there is grace that comes on you to stand. That makes you survive what others cannot survive. Remember the Bible says when men are saying there is a casting down. You shall say there is what? I can't hear you. When men are saying there is a casting down. What will you say? 
there is a lifting up. So it means when others are going down, there is something on your life that takes you higher. You are not permitted to go down like others. Your name is not others. You are a child of God. You are a child of destiny. You carry the grace of God. You believe that shout, Amen. Amen. Lift your one say in the name of Jesus. The God of all grace is my God. So when they ask you how come you are standing, tell them I have received grace. That's why coming to church should be something you should never be discouraged of, of doing. It doesn't matter what is happening in Shakahola, Shakabulu, Shaka. <laughs> Glory to God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 14, it says, let us boldly come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. So anytime you come to church, you are collecting grace. Somebody say a better amen here. Lift your hand say, I receive grace. I love the way you are talking this morning. Lift your hand again. Say, I receive grace. Lift your hand again. Shout, I receive grace. So grace to stand means to survive what others cannot survive. Am I communicating here? Are you aware that the flood that swallowed everyone in Noah's time was the same flood that lifted Noah? Glory to God. So understand that your case is different because you have received grace. What does it mean to stand? To stand means to, be, to maintain standards. To stand means to maintain standards. To stand doesn't mean you are just standing. To stand means you maintain standard and you, have, you maintain principles. You maintain standard. You, are not, you have not watered down your principles. You have not watered down your life to look like everybody. To stand means the same principles of scriptures you uphold. You are still upholding it. That's what it means to stand. We knew you as someone that hates any act of immorality 10 years ago. Today we meet you. You are still holding that principle. That is what it means to stand. We knew you as a prayerful sister seven years ago. We knew you today. Today you have become prayer yourself. That is what it means to stand. To maintain standards and to maintain principles. You are not beaten down by environment. You are not low. You not lower your standard by the economy of the nation or the environment. Your standard is still your standards. Somebody shout in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. Grace to stand. Hallelujah. What does it mean to stand? To stand means... To be consistent in your character. To be consistent. That's what it means to stand. We can, now, we, can, we can even predict you and be correct. You are so consistent that we can say we know that sister. That sister cannot say this. And actually by the time we asked, we discovered you were not the one that said it. You are consistent. Am I communicating here? Oh, ah, we just passed, eh? we just passed Sister, Sister Nebuchadnezzar. Look at Sister Nebuchadnezzar. She's the one wearing that dress. That dress that the front is under pressure. The back is under pressure. No, that is not Sister Nebuchadnezzar. She cannot wear it. By the time we check back and we look, we discover it is not Sister Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Am I communicating here? Consistency of character. The person you are in the open is the person you are in the secret. Am I communicating here? You are not a double-faced person. Anywhere you stand, you are consistent. Just like Joseph. Joseph was consistent in his father's house. He was not influenced by his brothers to do wrong. He brought their evil doings to his father. The same Joseph in Potiphar's house told Potiphar's wife, I cannot sleep with you. My father may not be here, but I will not do it. My mother may not be here, but I cannot do it. My brothers are not here, but I cannot do it. Consistency in character. In Canaan, in, in, in the father's house, consistent. In Egypt, consistent. That is what it means to stand. I pray for everyone here today. As you lift your hand to say amen, receive grace. Ah, I say receive grace. 
I say receive grace. I say receive grace. Lift your hand, shout, I receive grace. Shout again, I receive grace. Shout it louder, I receive grace. All right. What is the next level or dimension of grace that you need to receive? Number two is grace to forgive. Grace to what? Grace to forgive. This grace is very important that every one of us must receive it today. Am I communicating here? Because sometimes you sound like you are forgiving somebody, but you have not forgiven. <laughs> he said, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. It's okay, uh, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay, it's okay. It is only okay in your mouth. But deep within, the matter is still there. So you need grace when you say okay, it is actually okay in your mouth and okay in your heart. Am I communicating here? Grace to forgive. Grace to forgive. There are many bitter people everywhere. Looking like they are okay, but they are not okay. At any slightest provocation, vengeance is awoken. We need grace to forgive. Lift your hand. Say, I receive grace to forgive. Why you must forgive? Number one, it is commanded. Forgiveness is commanded. That's number one. Number two, the reason why you must forgive, you must receive grace to forgive, is to be Christ-like. To be Christ-like. You are not Christ-like if you are not forgiven. You are not Christ-like, sir. The size of your Bible is not what we want to see. We want to see your heart of forgiveness. Amen. To be Christ-like. Why you must forgive? Number three is because you are not perfect yourself. Psalms 103 verse number 10. Because you yourself, you are not perfect yourself. That's why you must forgive. That's why you must let go. Why you must forgive? Number, th number four is to compel answers to your prayers. Mark eleven twenty five 25 is to compel answers to your prayers. The reason why many of us pray and no answer is because we are not having a heart of forgiveness. And when you stand praying, what do you do? Amen. And when you stand praying, what do you do? What should you do? I want to hear you louder. When you stand praying, what should you do? He didn't say sing worship song. He said forgive. He didn't say speak in tongues in capital letters. He said forgive. Amen. Many of us use several things to cover when we stand to pray and we forget what is the fund foundational, fundamental matter. He said when you stand praying, make sure nothing is against anybody in your heart. Forgive. Before you speak in that tongues, Rava Magava Dava in capital letters, forgive us. Am I communicating here? Yeah. There are people that their tongues are capital letters. Ma va 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 rava ivaya vano vano vano. Before you speak capital letter tongues, do what? Forgive. Forgive. Forgiveness first. Before you start singing your worship song with that voice from your nose, forgive. Oh, Lord, man, Lord, man, Lord. Forgive first. <laughs> forgive first. Forgive. Forgive. If the prayer will be answered, forgive. That's why many of us can go on fasting, on prayer, yet no answer. Because of what? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is the greatest enemy of prayers. Hallelujah. When ye stand to pray, forgive. Somebody say amen here. Why you must forgive? Number four, forgive because so that God can forgive you. Matthew 6, 14. Forgive so that God can forgive you. Hmm? The next reason why you must forgive is to avoid bitterness. To so avoid a life of bitterness. One thing unforgiveness does is that unforgiveness graduates to bitterness. Bitterness is elder to unforgiveness. 
When you enter the realm of bitterness, it's a realm where when you see somebody that you have not forgiven, you start wishing them evil. That's where you now become bitter. And you can't be bitter and be better. There are people whose health are under challenge because of bitterness. Somebody say amen here. Bitterness is, is, is an enemy to sound health. Some people's sickness is bitterness. That's why even doctors cannot diagnose it. They use the apparatus. Apparatus cannot pick bitterness. There is no way they can test your body and the laboratory, the machine will show uh, bitterness. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what the, the, the main issue that is sponsoring the breakdown is bitterness. Glory to God. I tell you, when your heart is free, your body is lively. When you are free, you are healthy. Am I communicating here? In, in Proverbs 17, 22, the Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. It says, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. The man's bone is drying because his, his spirit is broken. Somebody say a better amen here. Why you must forgive. The next one, so that you will not fall short of the grace of God. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15 so that you will not fall short of the grace of God. Hebrews 12 and verse 15. Yes, looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. God is saying here that when you above bitterness, you, you fall short of grace. You run out of the supply of the grace of God. God hates bitterness. Glory to God. So God is saying to us today, grace will be released in this service. Grace to forgive. Wife, forgive your husband. Husband, forgive your wife. As a wife, you can carry your husband in your heart for two months and you have not forgiven him. In the night you are praying midnight prayer. You now wake up and face him in the night, 12 midnight, and start singing worship song. Anywhere Satan are gathered, Holy Ghost fire pursue them. Anywhere Satan are gathered, Holy Ghost fire. So your husband has become the Satan. Am I communicating here? Forgive. Forgive. So go home, hug your husband, tell him, my husband, I have forgiven you. Glory to God. Grace to forgive. Why you must forgive? You must forgive for you to experience divine intervention. For you to experience divine intervention. Divine intervention. You know the story of Job. Job was afflicted and his friends came around. For how many days? They sat down not saying anything. When they began talking, they began accusing him. They said, Job, confess your sin. Job, you are a sinner. Job, there, were, there are things you are doing behind that has brought this affliction to you. They never encouraged him once. I believe at a point, Job became bitter. And the Bible said in Job 42 verse 10, look at that scripture. The Bible says, and God turned, Job chapter 42 and verse number 10. Media, put it on the screen. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Ah! If it were you, will you pray for that, that kind of friends? No, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire, fall down and die, fall down and die, fall down and die. Amen. But when Job began to pray for his friends, the same friends that accused him, the Bible said God turned his captivity and God gave him twice as much as he had before. That is what happens when we forgive, when we release people that have offended us. When we pray for people that have offended us, we experience divine intervention. Am I communicating here? No matter what has happened in the past, forgive them, let them go. Don't carry the past into your present. It will affect your future. Glory to God. Allow the past to pass. Yes, the young man said he wanted to marry you. He did not end up marrying you. Allow him to go. Allow him to go. 
this is uh, seven years now. You cannot make complete statement without calling his name. You, Nebuchadnezzar must enter what you are saying. <laughs> Say that Nebuchadnezzar, wherever he is, eh, it will never be better for him. He will suffer. He will suffer. Except I am not serving the living God. I know, sir. Allow him to go. When first John goes, second John will come. Somebody say amen here. Even the Bible says in Isaiah 43, 18, 19, it says, remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. The reason God has not done a new thing, you are still holding the old. You are still talking about the old. That young man, he broke my heart, broke my waist, broke my leg, broke everywhere in my body before he left. He will, he will never be well with him. It will never. Allow him to go. Let God do a new thing. Somebody shout a better amen here. Lift your one shout, I receive grace. Louder shout, I receive grace. Louder again shout, I receive grace. The next reason why you must forgive is so that you can spend eternity with God. Unforgiveness should not be the reason you go to hell. Bitterness should not be the reason why you go to hell. Am I communicating here? Because the Bible says no unclean thing will enter therein. Amen. Unforgiveness makes you unclean before God. Bitterness makes you unclean before God. So God is bringing this word to us this morning. And he's charging us that this morning as you rise from this service, whoever has, has done anything against you in the past, maybe the person has moved on and you have not moved on. Today, release them. Move on with your life. There is more ahead of you than behind you. Somebody say better amen here. There is more in your future than what you have lost in the past. It doesn't matter who lied against you, forgive them. Who said that you did what you never did, forgive them. Who said you said what you never said, forgive them. Am I communicating here? No matter what it is, forgive them. And let God himself step into your matter. Because you have forgiven. Lift up your hand. Say, I receive grace to forgive. Louder, say, I receive grace to forgive. Louder again, say, I receive grace to forgive. Louder again, say, I receive grace to forgive. Glory to God. Rise up on your feet. Amen. Have you received something this morning? All right. Lift up your right hand. Say, in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to stand. Louder say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to stand. Glory to God. Can I say this here? There is nothing happening in this nation that will bring you down. You will stand. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is nothing happening negatively that will affect your faith. You will stand. In the name of Jesus. There is no news that will shift you out of your conviction about your God. Am I communicating here? I pray for you from this altar that in the name of Jesus, receive grace to stand. Lift your one shout, I receive grace to stand. Louder say, I receive grace to stand. Lift up your voice, turn into prayer. Lord, I receive grace to stand. I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive grace to stand. I receive grace to stand. I receive grace to stand. La supa li kataba hades. Le breke toba shila balada baha. Li breke toba shata pa li kataha. Le brata bakatosa li kataha. Le breke toba shada balabada balabadash. Li breke toba sapa li kataha. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Someone is here, you are saying, man of God, you don't understand what has happened. Why are you this thing? I cannot just forgive like that. I know you have preached. I'm praying for you today that in the name of Jesus, receive grace in your heart. Receive grace to forgive. No matter the weight of the offense, receive grace to forgive. 
Stretch forth your hand towards the altar, everyone. Stretch forth your hands towards the altar. As your hands are stretched to this altar, I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, may the grace to forgive be impacted in your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, the grace to let go be impacted in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed and you are favored in Jesus' precious name. Put your hands together for the Lord.